Hey guys, let me tell you a story about how I was able to make an additional $1,600 every single month as well as increase the value of my property by $320,000. I was able to do this because where I saw a diamond, everyone else saw coal. I was able to notice the opportunity and capitalize on it while other investors just walked straight out of the door and ran away. I'm gonna go over what I saw and what I did to make this deal so profitable. So when you encounter something like this in your real estate investing career, you'll know exactly what to do. A little over four years ago in 2015, I bought a four unit property that just sat on the market for months because people didn't see the potential. When I first saw this property, I didn't think it was a good deal myself. I went and took a look at it. It was a four unit property, two one bedroom units, two two bedroom units. All the units looked pretty messy, very outdated and had a really weird design. When I went into the cellar, it was just mold on the ceiling. The, the property owner really didn't take care of it. They just didn't do much maintenance and things kind of got a little out of control and the condition of the property just deteriorated over the years. The owner was asking for $900,000 and it still needed $100,000 worth of work. So when most investors looked at it, they were like, wow, this is such a ripoff. There's no way anybody would pay a million dollars for something like this. So I really wish that I had recorded footage of this actual place, but uh, this was way before I started YouTube, so I didn't get any actual footage. But I do have a copy of the home inspection, so I'm gonna show you some of the photos that were taken of the interior of the house. So over here we have the front of the house. It's like, like I said, four units, two one bedrooms, and two two bedrooms. But yeah, look at in the basement. This is ridiculous. There's asbestos mold, more asbestos, even more along the pipes, even more the boiler was actually dying. So I ended up getting rid of that one boiler and installing four separate boilers for each unit. Um, yeah, there's just like water damage. The paint was pretty much falling off the ceiling. There was an issue with the drain. Garages in the back were in pretty bad shape. And yeah, little things here and there. More pictures of just how nasty the basement was. And the units were all messed up too. There, there was no way, like, we, this place needed a lot of work. With two one-bedroom units, two two-bedroom units, you're only going to be making about six thousand something dollars a month in rent. That's horrible. At the end of the day, your returns are about four percent at best. Let me not waste my time. Let me just get out of here. What they failed to realize was the location of this property was key. This property is located one block away from the engineering building of a college. So I knew there was going to be a lot of students that were going to try to rent in this area. So that's when it clicked. That's where the opportunity was. Student rentals. Most students don't need a big living room and also you don't want to provide students with a big living room. What students really want is just a quiet space, big bedroom, somewhere that they can go back to after they're done, after they're done with all their classes. So what I ended up doing was I sectioned off part of the living rooms and made an additional bedroom out of them. Of course I got plans drawn and everything was to code and legal. So I know it can be hard to visualize what I'm talking about without seeing footage of the place. So I made a diagram for you guys. This is basically a diagram of one of the floors. It's a two floor house with two units on each floor, totaling four units. So on the right side of the building, there's a one bedroom apartment and on the left side of the building, there's a two bedroom apartment. So what we ended up doing was on, in the one bedroom apartment, we ended up putting up one wall to add an extra bedroom and also created closets in between the two bedrooms. And then we moved the bathroom next to the bedroom so we can put a kitchen where the bathroom was. By doing this, we were able to transform the one bedroom apartment into a two bedroom apartment. 
Now in the other unit, we basically just put up a wall again and created a third bedroom, added a closet, moved over the door of one of the existing bedrooms so we can put closets in each of the bedrooms again. You know, for student rentals, they want to have their own storage space. So there, here you have it. You know, it went from a one bedroom apartment and a two bedroom apartment on each floor to a two bedroom apartment and a three bedroom apartment in each floor. So after that, I have two two bedroom apartments and two three bedroom apartments. Now I can rent to a lot more students. The rent went from the usual $1,500 a month for a bedroom in that area to $1,800 a month. The two bedrooms went from $1,900 a month to $2,200 a month. So there's a $300 difference per apartment. Four units, $300 each, that's $1,200 extra every single month. The other thing that I did was I was able to split the heating system in the house to four separate heating systems instead of one. This allowed me to separate the meters and each unit now pays for their own heat. Heat in this area is about 200 something dollars every single month in the winter time. So average that out with the winter and summertime, it comes out to about $100 a month. So I made $300 extra each apartment and I saved $100. So in total, that's $400 gain per apartment. That comes out to $1,600 every single month. Now to explain how I gained $320,000 in value, I need to explain what investors look at in terms of numbers when they purchase a property. So when investors look at a property and they're planning to rent it out, they look at what's called a cap rate. The cap rate is basically how much you make versus what the property is actually worth. You take the income of the property minus the expense and divide it by the value of the property. So using that equation, if you're able to increase the income of the property, you're able to increase the value of the property itself. In my area, an acceptable cap rate is 6%. So since I increased the income by $1,200 a month and decreased the expense by $400 a month, that's a net gain of $1,600. So what you have to do is multiply the $1,600 by 12 to get the yearly increase in profit and then you divide it by the cap rate, which is 6% in this case, and you get the increase in value. So that's $320,000. What this is called is forced appreciation. Forced appreciation, as opposed to regular appreciation, is basically something that you did to force it to appreciate, something you did to force it to increase in value. Appreci regular appreciation is when the area just increases in value. Since I was able to do something to increase the profit, I was able to force it to be more valuable. So the takeaway to this is you need to know your customer. You need to know what they want, what is important to them, so you can cater to that. Since I knew there was a lot of students in the area and they were looking for bedrooms instead of a bigger living room, I was able to create an extra room in every single apartment therefore increasing how many students I can rent to. It also works out better for them as well because if they had rented it as a one bedroom, then one student would have to pay $1,500. But since it's a two bedroom now, and I rent it for $1,800, each student just only needs to pay $900. It works out even better for them. So if you know your customer, you can cater your product directly to them. So I hope you learned something here. Things aren't always so straightforward. You need to be able to see opportunity where other people see no hope. That's how you make the money. So if you like this story, please hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you wanna see more videos about real estate, investing, finance, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.